Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. Uh, we've got another video on the CR6SE. Uh, I did get this thing used. Um, it did have an issue when I first bought it with the power. Um, I have a video I'll link right up there if you would want to watch that and kind of the diagnosis and how I fixed it. Um, I've been printing quite a bit and I've been noticing I'm having some issues with the heating block, um, but I think it might be a cheap and easy fix. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. Uh, we're gonna be using a uh, heating cartridge and a thermosistor um, and show you all the tools, the supplies, exactly how I change these two little parts out, which is very simple to do, something you can easily do with pretty much the tools that you have in your kit. Uh, but wanted to walk you through all the steps on what I did and uh, how I solved this problem to get this thing back up and running uh, to a little bit better degree. Um, sometimes the temperatures would fluctuate, uh, not on the, the bed itself, but uh, inside the nozzle. And so I did a lot of research and I think this is one of my, my fixes. Uh, eventually I'm hoping to be able to get uh, one of the all metal uh, pieces. Uh, right now I can't afford that, even though it's not that expensive, I'm just, going and uh, doing what I can. And so these were just a few dollars each and seeing if that is the route it needs to go. Here are the tools and the supplies that I used for this. I did use a needle nose plier. Um, you will want to make sure inside your little toolkit that you get out the 1.5 and 2.0 Allen wrenches. You will also probably want at least one wire tie to tie everything back together. Other than the two parts that I did change out, this is that heating cartridge. It did come with two of them. And so the case kind of broke when I got it. Other than there is one of the thermosistor. Um, both of those are what I changed out in this video. So you'll see exactly how I did that. You are going to need that number two. And so we'll go ahead and pull that out. We'll go ahead and open up right here and spin this off to the left. And so there are two screws on the top. So there's the first one. Put that in a safe place. In fact, you can put it right here in this little container so you don't lose it. And we'll go ahead and get the second one off. And just go ahead and spin it to the left. I know that camera view is not very good, but just spin it off to the left. And then you can kind of pull the whole thing out together. And then this will be clipped on here, this kind of bluish purple and uh, yellow wire. And so go ahead and lift that out and over and we'll just kind of set it off to the side. We are gonna have to turn this on in a second um, and lift this up uh, so we can get down and under where we're headed. So you can go and turn it on. Do be careful. Uh, this does have a lot of electrical stuff and can't hurt you if you're not careful. And so you will hear the fan going in here. That's totally fine. I do like to kind of hold it. Um, go ahead and click prepare. Go ahead and move. And then we're going to move the Z up. This is by 10 millimeters each time. So hit it five or six or seven times. The goal is so you can get down and under. And so it should not be heating up, but you do want to look at your temperatures just so you don't burn yourself. Uh, you will be going right where the hot end is, and uh, you'd want to be very careful with that. That can burn and hurt you pretty bad. Um, and I'll get a reposition on the camera as soon as we get this lifted so you have the ability to see it really well. Go ahead and turn it off. And then we'll go ahead and kind of stick that up off to the side. And so now you kind of have more of a side view. I am going to go ahead and peel this piece off right here and set this off to the side. The next thing you'll need to do is go ahead and cut this little wire tie. It is black here. So do be careful not to cut any of your wires when doing that. Uh, then you will need to pull out. We'll just do this one first. Pull this straight out. Uh, then we'll need to get underneath here and there's an Allen wrench. You're going to use the smallest one, which is a 1.5 and uh, there'll be a screw right in the front and just begin to twist that. Uh, this is a set screw, so you will not need to take it all the way off and just slowly pull that out. And there you go. So this is the old one. The new one looks very similar. Um, it was in the little case. 
but I did put the screws in the case, so I don't want those to fall out. So go ahead and grab it out of there. And so this heating cartridge will go right back into the same spot. I then actually come in here and plug it into the actual part. And you're going to go ahead and grab your small one again. Make sure it's nice and centered between the two points. And tighten this down. And you want to make it kind of snug. You don't want to overdo it. And then, so your heating uh, cartridge is taken care of. Now the thermosistor. I probably am saying that wrong. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and same thing. Set screw is behind it. Same size. I'm just going to turn it about three or four, maybe five times. See if I can wiggle it at all. There, it's starting to come out. So I know that one will be good. And sometimes if you take needle nose, it actually does kind of help to where you can pull these out a little easier. Do be careful not to break anything. This one is kind of all up in there. So there we go. Go ahead and take that one out. This has the two kind of metal and this one is really really loose in here like it doesn't make a good connection so that could be part of my issues i'm just having some difficulty making sure it all heats up properly and is reading the correct temperature so we'll go ahead take the new one out of the same kind of looking container it's in a little ziploc baggie and we'll go ahead and plug that one in I then twist the cable down where it needs to go. My hands are kind of big, so I'm sorry if they are in your way seeing this, but you're just gonna plug it in the same way you took it out. I think I'm gonna use some needle nose just to give you a little better view. My hands are kind of big. This does not take a lot of force either direction, getting it out or getting it in. You just wanna make sure you're nice and lined up. Uh, then we'll go ahead and kind of position this to where it needs to go and put it in just like so. And this one might be just a tiny bit bigger than the original one. This was a used machine, so I'm not certain if I actually all this is original, original. But we'll go ahead and put that in to place and go ahead and tighten that down. Pretty simple to do. You will need to go ahead and grab a new wire tie and we want to make sure we kind of get all of it. So you're going to want to make sure you're kind of where it needs to go to get everything. Because you do want to make sure these wires stay where they're supposed to and that wire tie does just help. And that just kind of keeps everything where it's supposed to. I'll give you a little different camera view there. That wire tie is just where I want it. And then just take the back side of these and cut that. I like to leave a little bit of room so I can easily get in there and cut that if I ever have to do another repair, which probably will. So after both the set screws are taken care of and you have your new uh, wire tie on there, we're gonna go ahead and put this on. Um, this is really important you do this step next. And so this just goes on the kind of blank empty side is right over here. And then you can go ahead and work on getting this where it needs to go. So this needs to come back on and under here, that blue and yellow. If you're like me, you're probably thinking that's Michigan colors. Uh, not a huge Michigan fan, but uh, if that's what you like, whatever. Ohio State all the way. And then we will uh, go ahead, get that next size up, which is a 2.0. And... Just kind of let that hang there. It may fall on me. I hope it doesn't. And go ahead. Put the first one in. Let me give you a little different camera angle. So go ahead and put that first screw in. And you're just going to tighten that down. You don't have to over tighten this. You do want it firm, but you don't have to crank it down. Go ahead and get the next screw. This 
So we got the first screw there. Here's the second screw. This one is always kind of the harder one for me to always get in there. And so you can see it's on there. And then I kind of just hold it just, just above here with two fingers and just start twisting it down. And you just want that nice and firm. I'll go ahead and hit up the other one. And then I like to kind of put everything back into the bags. And then from there, we can go ahead and turn on the 3D printer. And since this is a CR6SE, it has the feature for auto leveling. And so we'll go ahead and click level, auto leveling. And it will need to heat up to 120 degrees on that nozzle tip. So we'll go ahead and let that do that now. So I did just change out colors if you're wondering because I do want to print a, a one of these. Um, this is a little USB uh, SD card holder. And so I wanted to be able to um, kind of get a different color so it was obvious I didn't just print the same thing out again. So we'll let that go ahead and warm up over here and then uh, see how well it prints. So that print is done after we repaired the two parts in there. So we'll finish the print and go ahead and pop it off and check to see how it did. And so there is a little bit of like the hair stuff that comes on there, but this is so much better than what we were getting. Um, you can see that it is a full print. Uh, I didn't want to really record for three and a half hours, but overall that worked so well getting those two parts. Um, remember I changed out the thermosistor and the heating cartridge and uh, this worked and so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope if this is your problem, you're able to fix it and get your 3D printer back up and running and doing whatever you want to do. Hope you have a great day. Take care.